All right, and welcome back to the next part of the Dofer A167 comparator module. This time around, we're going to be looking specifically at the A167's uh, offset features as well as the comparator gate outputs. Uh, I decided to split this into a separate section uh, just because I wanted to spend a little bit more time looking at our friend down here at the bottom, uh, oscilloscope. Uh, this oscilloscope is going to assist us in kind of getting an overview or visualizing exactly what the comparator is going to be doing for us. Uh, I thought that would be fairly useful because it was useful for me actually just going through this and uh, doing a few little demonstrations. So I have some things set up, uh, planned, that uh, I wanted to try. Uh, so without further ado, let's just go ahead and start jumping into those. Um, now, one thing I do want to mention, though, before we go any further, is our oscilloscope over here is actually a special type of module uh, in the Eurorack format, and it is made by Dave Jones Design, and it's called the O-Tool. So, just wanted to give a little shout out about this particular module. I found it very useful in my in my uh, modular patching. So, when you look at it, now you know what it is. Um, and then we're also going to be using one other special little uh, guest star, um, and that's going to be this cable right here. Uh, this cable uh, is made by a company called Tip Top Audio, and it's called a stack cable. You can see it's got little uh, eighth inch jacks out the back of it, and we're going to be using it for a very uh, specific reason, um, because this cable can actually act as a multiple. Uh, if you're familiar with that term. But basically, it's going to let us uh, split our signal more than once, which is actually what we're going to need in the visualization portion of this here a little bit later. Um, but just to start out with, before we split the signal, um, I just want to pipe just the normal signal of our VC LFO, voltage-controlled LFO, over into our oscilloscope so you can see what exactly this looks like before we do any kind of modifications to it via the comparator. So patching it in, and there is our sine wave. Okay? So now you can see that that is just a normal sine wave. That's exactly what you expect. Um, nothing, nothing funny going on, nothing up my sleeve, so to speak. So let me unpatch that. And uh, now I'm going to flip this oscilloscope into my dual mode. If I can push the right button here. There we go. I'm going to do uh, dual stacked mode. And this is going to let me view two uh, inputs at the same time. So I'm going to be viewing my uh, regular waveform over here for my A147 going into one of these, uh, the top one, I believe. And then the bottom one, I'm going to be feeding the comparator output to. But in order for me to do that, because I only have one output over here, uh, I'm going to need my Tip Top Audio stack cable. So I'm going to patch this in right here. There we go. And I'm going to just turn that a little bit. And then I'm going to go over to my oscilloscope, and I'm going to patch this in. So here we go, patching in sine wave. There we go. If you see the oscilloscope over here, you can see that now we have our sine wave going in right there at the top. And we are viewing it like we expect. So now if we go back to the A147, I'm going to actually just patch right into the back of this cable. And this is actually going to give me a sine wave, again, right out of this cable. And I'm going to patch this into my plus in input right here of my comparator. And then I'm going to go out the analog sum over here. There we go. Make sure it's all the way in. There we go. And then my offset is to zero. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go back over to my oscilloscope and I'm going to patch into the lower input. There we go. I think maybe one of my cables is not all the way up. Okay, no, that's what I expect because this is actually all the way down. So now that we know that we're at zero, let's bring this up a little bit. I'm going to bring it up to about, oh, let's bring it up to about three. 
And now let's go over to our oscilloscope and see what we have so far. So right there at our oscilloscope, you can see that the top is representing the normal uh, frequency of our waveform, and the bottom is representing the uh, the one coming from the comparator. And you can see that there's a slight difference there. I actually change my trace mode for a moment. I think maybe I had adjusted it when I didn't mean to, so let me just bring it back to normal here. Okay. So there you can see the waveform. Now, if I go back to my A167 and uh, bring up the plus in right there to about halfway, the bottom waveform over here on our oscilloscope should be half the volume of the one right above it. And then here, interestingly enough, if I go all the way up to 100, if you look back at the A167, I'm bringing it up. And as I'm bringing it up, if you look at the oscilloscope, they are now becoming more and more alike. So there we just have two copies of the same waveform. So just using this to point out that uh, at the comparator input, at about half, you have 50% the volume, which is what we have over here in the oscilloscope. This is what it looks like. And then all the way at the top, you have identical, what is coming in the plus in input. Uh, pretty straightforward right there. Uh, nothing too crazy uh, to visualize here. And I'm going to switch modes on my oscilloscope here. So please bear with me for just a moment. And I'm looking for one that's called, there's my single mode, the dual layered. I think that's the one I wanted. Or no, I actually wanted, no, I think that's the one I wanted, the dual layered. So let me get back. I just jumped the gun a little bit. Okay. So interestingly enough, if we look at this, uh, we see just one waveform, and it's yellow. And you might be going, okay, well, don't you have two inputs? And if it's dual, then why don't I see two waveforms? Well, if you remember, looking back at the A167, the volume's all the way at 100%, so of course we're only going to see one, and it's actually yellow. So now if I bring the volume down on my A167 and we flip back to our oscilloscope, you can actually see two waveforms. So the red one is going to be representing um, the regular back here at the A147 sine wave. And then if I look back at my oscilloscope, the green one is going to be representing what is coming out of my back at the A167 comparator analog sum right here. Okay? So hopefully that was, uh, that was pretty clear. Um, this is a fairly interesting example, at least I found it to be, uh, but the next one down is actually a little more interesting, at least I thought. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unpatch the second one in my positive end. I'm going to bring that level all the way down. If we look at our oscilloscope, now we have just the normal sine wave going all the way across. And then the second line is sort of just straight all the way across. And on our A167 now, we're going to go into the minus in, or negative input. I'm patch into that. There we go. Back at our oscilloscope, our line is still all the way across, but that's normal because at our A167, the volume is all the way down. So as I bring this up, I'm going to bring it up to about 3. Let's take a look at our oscilloscope. So it looks a little bit different this time. And the reason it, for that is, of course, it's, it's actually inverting it. Uh, so what you have is wherever there's a valley on our regular waveform, there's a peak. And wherever there's a peak, there's a valley, if that makes sense. Uh, so it's basically almost like a reverse or an inverse of the waveform. Now, keep looking at the oscilloscope, because I'm going to actually keep bringing the level up until we get all the way to the top. And if we look at my A167, I'm at full volume now. So right there, we have an inverted copy of our sine wave, and we have the regular version of our sine wave. 
So you can use it for these kind of utility functions, the A167, uh, such as getting another waveform, uh, bringing the volume of it down, you know, using it as a, as a tractor, um, or uh, using it as an inverter. So you can invert whatever waveform you feed into it. So pretty interesting. At least I thought so when I was going through this little demonstration. So that is piping in to the input here. Uh, now I'm going to unpatch this again. There we go.